Welcome back to this new inspirational video. Today I wanted to go on with chapter 14 from the book The Science of Being Great called Action at Home. So he's going to essentially talk about how you can take action from your current circumstances, so from your current home, and how to do so from the most optimistic and powerful frame of mind. It is another beautiful chapter full of reminders on how we want to go about it on a daily basis in order to grow towards a better future for ourselves together with our friends and family and everyone else. Now Walter started out by saying, do not merely think that you are going to become great, think that you are great now. Do not think that you will begin to act in a great way at some future time, begin now. Do not think that you will act in a great way when you reach a different environment, act in a great way where you are now. Do not think that you will begin to act in a great way when you begin to deal with great things. Begin to deal in a great way with small things. Do not think that you will begin to be great when you get among more intelligent people or among people who understand you better. Begin now to deal in a great way with the people around you. Now this is already a very good point that he made concerning, for example, that we do not want to wait to take action until we are in a different or better environment. This happens actually very often with people and it's a very subtle thing where you might say well once this or that is in place then I can take action or then I can work on my dream. This sometimes or obviously many times happens from a financial perspective where you might say I don't have the budget to work on my dream right now so I'll do this in the future. What we have to analyze for ourselves is is it really true that you can't do anything about your dream no matter the budget you have? With me, for a long time, that's how I would look at it. I would think that making videos like this would be too tricky and too expensive. So I figured, well, I can't do it just yet. This kept going on for a couple years until I finally figured out a way to make it actually financially affordable for me to, for me to make this sort of content. And now that I'm doing it, actually everything is expanding and finally on track for me. Now the point of view that I was operating from was because of the amount of visuals that I use in my videos and the music that is in the background. Depending on how you go about this, it can become very expensive because you need a license for pretty much everything. The only good news is I don't need a license to use my own voice, so at least there's a positive, right? But I simply like to have some visuals and audio going on with the message to sort of carry the narrations around. And I finally figured out how to do it. It took me a while, but here it is. So in a way I was tricking myself. I wasn't really thinking clearly about that point. This is something you want to keep in mind for yourself, whether you're doing that or not. Because you're going to find it's very easy to fall into this sort of attitude. And it will only delay the realization of your own dream when perhaps it doesn't even have to be delayed all that much. Perhaps you are already in the position to at least do something about your dream, no matter the money you have in this case, or even no matter the connections you have. Because after all, we're going to have to grow towards the realization of our dream from our current circumstances. That is just how it always will be. So we're going to have to have an open mind and really analyze this for ourselves so that we can take the right actions no matter where we stand. Now he went on to say that if you are not in an environment where there is a scope for your best powers and talents, you can move in due time. But meanwhile, you can be great where you are. So again, even he reminds us of this one interesting and most important fact. Do not talk about your greatness. You are really, in essential nature, no greater than those around you. You may have entered upon a way of living and thinking which they have not yet found. But they are perfect on their own plane of thought and action. You are entitled to no special honor or consideration for your greatness. You are a god, but you are among gods. You will fall into the boastful attitude if you see other people's shortcomings and failures and compare them with your own virtues and successes. And if you fall into the boastful attitude of mind, you will cease to be great and become small. Think of yourself as a perfect being among other perfect beings and meet every person as an equal, not as either a superior or an inferior. Give yourself no airs, great people never do. Ask no honors and seek for no recognition. Honors and recognition will come fast enough if you are entitled to them. Now he went on to say and to remind us that we have to begin at home. It is a great person who can always be poised, assured, calm and perfectly kind and considerate at home. 
If your manner and attitude in your own family are always the best you can think, you will soon become the one on whom all the others will rely. You will be a tower of strength and of support in times of trouble. You will be loved and appreciated. At the same time, do not make the mistake of throwing yourself away in the service of others. The great person respects himself. He serves and helps, but he is never slavishly servile. You cannot help your family by being a slave to them, or by doing for them those things which by right they should do for themselves. You do a person an injury when you wait on him too much. The selfish and exacting are a great deal better off if their exactions are denied. The ideal world is not one where there are a lot of people being waited on by other people. It is a world where everybody waits on himself. Meet all demands, selfish and otherwise, with perfect kindness and consideration. But do not allow yourself to be made a slave to the whims, caprices, exactions or slavish desires of any member of your family or friendships. To do so is not great and it works an injury to the other party. Do not become uneasy over the failures or mistakes of any member of your family and feel that you must interfere. Do not be disturbed if others seem to be going wrong and feel that you must step in and set them right. Remember that every person is perfect on his own plane. You cannot improve on the work of God. Do not meddle with the personal habits and practices of others. Though they are your nearest and dearest, these things are none of your business. Nothing can be wrong but your own personal attitude. Make that right and you will know that all else is right. You are a truly great soul when you can live with those who do things that you do not do and yet refrain from either criticism or interference. Do the things that are right for you to do and believe that every member of your family is doing the things that are right for them. Nothing is wrong with anybody or anything. Behold, it is all very good. Do not be enslaved by anyone else but be just as careful that you do not enslave anyone else to your own notions of what is right. Think and think deeply and continuously. Be perfect in your kindness and consideration. Let your attitude be that of a god among gods and not that of a god among inferior beings. This is the way to be great in your own home. And that is the end of the chapter. A rather short chapter, but it's meant as a reminder to tell us the state of mind or the frame of mind from which we should operate. Now, perhaps some of these wordings are a little too extreme for you to see yourself as a god among gods, but the idea behind it is to simply be in an optimistic state of mind and really let people, well, alone in a way. It's it sounds bizarre, perhaps, but. What we're talking about is this tendency we have is to indulge in negative thoughts concerning what other people are doing and the things that are happening around us. But if we let go of that and really keep our minds focused on what we are passionate about and what we really want to do with our lives, that state of passion that's being expressed with and through us will always keep us in a highly optimistic frame of mind and therefore we are in the position of always sharing the best version of ourselves with the world regardless of what our family members or friends are doing or even strangers. This is the point. That way we are being directed by our dreams instead of by the negativity and limitations of the physical world that might potentially show themselves to us. So I hope you get the point here. It's very fun to experiment with this and in the end it's actually going to make your life a lot more beautiful and meaningful and that's a bonus. Now if you're new to this channel consider subscribing to receive inspirational videos on a regular basis. And with that being said, dear viewer, never forget that we are the dreamers.